Imagine waking up on the first day of every month and seeing £3,000 hit your bank account without you doing anything. No Zoom calls, no networking events, just £3,000 in passive income. That's the dream, right? And fortunately, that's the situation I eventually found myself in after many years of working in property. Now, nothing is ever as perfect as it seems. The word passive can be misleading and property can be stressful. But there are a lot of investors who earn at least £3,000 a month, and it does mean that they can work less, spend more time with their families, and even retire early if they want to. So in this video, I'm going to take you through our buy to let blue Print, which explains the three strategies you can use to hit £3,000 a month and beyond. So by the end of this video, you'll know exactly what to do, how to start, and the best strategy for you. In order to show you the three strategies properly, I need to first explain what most beginners get wrong. And to do that, I'm going to tell you a story about a friend of mine called Sanjay. Now, Sanjay's got a pretty well-paid career working in tech. And like a lot of us, he doesn't hate his job, but he's terrified by the thought of having to wake up and do it every day for decades and decades to come. What Sanjay really wants is the freedom to retire early or maybe switch to contracting so he can take on less work and have more time to travel and do all the other things that he loves. And maybe because he'd been listening to me bang on about property for years, he saw buy to let as his ticket to that lifestyle. So after a few years of saving, Sanjay took the plunge and bought his first investment property. And he did everything right. He avoided all the common mistakes and ended up with a property that makes him a tidy profit of £400 each month. Sanjay was over the moon. But that excitement quickly faded as he began to realise his problem. £400 is nice to have, but it's nowhere near enough to change his life. He needs a lot more. Now it's been five years since he bought the house and Sanjay has had the rent coming in like clockwork. He's had a good tenant, no drama there. But even after saving up all his rental profit for all that time, he's still miles off having enough to buy his second property. And even if he bought a second, he'd still need to add a third, fourth, and even more before he hits his £3,000 per month goal. But what about the value of the house? If that's gone up, he could increase the size of his mortgage and use the extra cash to buy more. Well, because he prioritised buying a property that produced the highest possible rental income, it's not in an area that's seen any real growth. Even though some parts of the country have seen some big increases in value over over that time, Sanjay's place is worth pretty much the same as he paid for it. And he bought something that was already in good condition, so he hasn't done any work that would have increased the value. So even though tactically he did everything right, Sanjay's feeling pretty disappointed with the whole property game because it hasn't changed his life in the way he thought it would. And that's because there's a big problem with his strategy. So let's break it down. Sanjay's aiming for £3,000 per month. Obviously, that's £36,000 per year. Plugging in a pretty standard figure, every year you might expect to bank 7% of the amount you invested as profit. In property jargon, that's known as return on investment or ROI. So if we reverse back from that and divide the £36,000 goal by the 7% return, you end up with £500,000. In other words, assuming this middle of the road 7% ROI figure, you'd need half a million pounds invested to achieve that £3,000 per month pre-tax. So here's the million dollar question, or should I say the half million pound question. Do you have £500,000 lying around? If you do, then great, no strategy needed, just go and invest it. But of course, almost nobody does. And typically, people who do have larger amounts of cash knocking about have a higher monthly income goal anyway. So in the end, almost nobody is able to just invest the cash they've got in property and immediately turn that into an amount of rental income they're happy with. They have to do something else first. It's not as simple as buy a property, sit back and watch the money roll in. Now there are lots of ways to go about this, but I'm going to run you through the three big strategies that can help you bridge the gap between where you are now and where you want to be. So option one is flipping properties. You can think of this as property trading rather than property investing. It's all about buying a property, increasing its value, usually by refurbishing it, and then selling it for a profit. The idea is to grow your capital so you can then reinvest into another project. So how does this work in real life? Let's keep things ultra simple and say you've got £100,000 to start with. Now that's way short of the £500,000 we identified that you need to make £3,000 a month in rental income. But here's what you could do. You invest your £100,000 into a property to flip. Let's say you manage to make a margin of 20%. So you put 100000 in and take 120000 out. You then reinvest that 120000 into a slightly more expensive project. This time, making the same margin, you turn the 120000 into £145,000. And you keep going and going and going, doing progressively more expensive projects or working on multiple projects at a time until eventually, bingo, you have that magic £500,000. And at that point, you could stop flipping 
and reinvest that capital into properties to hold on to and rent out. And with our 7% return on investment figure, you'd be making that pre-tax £3,000 per month we're aiming for. Now, of course, these are all just rough, made-up numbers to demonstrate a general principle. But the overall gist is that you're using flips to grow your capital until you do have enough to invest and live off the rental income alone, which, as you're about to see, is similar to our second strategy. The second option is commonly known as buy, refurb, refinance. And here's how it works. First, you buy a property and improve it in some way, just like you would with a flip. But instead of selling the property for a higher price, you take out a mortgage against its new higher value. For example, say you use your £100,000 to buy a property that's worth £200,000. You then spend £30,000 doing it up and you get it revalued at £260,000. Now you can get a mortgage for up to 75% of its new £260,000 value rather than the original 200,000, assuming all the other numbers stack up. That releases an extra 45,000 pounds of cash that can be reinvested. So let's imagine that by adding value in this way and refinancing at a higher value, you're able to pull back out half of the money that you put in. Obviously, because you then only have half as much invested, this automatically doubles your return. So you double that 7% ROI to 14%. Divide the £36,000 goal by 14%. And as a result, investing just £250,000 would now be enough to get you to £3,000 per month. Clearly, that is still a lot of money. But by adding more over time and saving up your rental income, you might be able to get there in the end, even if half a million is totally out of reach. Again, this is all super rough and I'm just illustrating a general point here. But the key thing is, like flipping, this is an active strategy. You're not just buying a property and sitting back. You're actively adding value, then leveraging that added value to grow your portfolio faster. It's a way of supercharging your investment, getting you to that end goal quicker than you might by using the third strategy. But the third strategy is actually the approach that I use myself because it's the most passive way to invest. Instead of actively working on the properties, the only active thing you do is make the right purchase in the right place. Then you essentially wait for the market to do the work for you. Here's how that might look. Let's say you've got the same £100,000 that we've been working with all along. You then use mortgages to buy two homes worth £165,000 each. Now, they're obviously producing rental income, but that's not what we're focusing on right now. What we're most interested in is their value. And let's imagine each of those goes up in value by 5% per year. Now, I know what you're thinking. 5% growth every year? That's more than you'd expect the overall market to go up on average. But whenever there's an average, there are obviously results above and below that average. So by buying the right property in the right area, this kind of outcome is far from guaranteed, but is potentially possible. So if you project that growth out for 12 years, and at that point you sell your properties and chuck in a little bit of the rental income you've collected along the way, you'd end up with about £500,000 in your bank account. Invest that and achieve our 7% ROI, and boom, you've got your £36,000 income or £3,000 per month. Now, there are, of course, some caveats here. That 5% growth per year would need to be 5% above inflation for your future 500000 to be worth the same as it is today, which is a tall order. And if the properties you bought to get you that growth aren't the same ones that you want to hold on to for income, which is often the case, you'd have tax to pay when selling and rebuying, which would reduce the amount you have available to reinvest. So unless you do exceptionally well, or the market is exceptionally kind, you're probably not going to turn your £100,000 into £500,000 of investable capital in exactly 12 years. You'll likely need to add some more years or put in some more cash over time, or ideally both. But here's the big advantage of this approach. You don't have to actually do anything. It's far more passive than the previous two strategies, which makes it right for some people, but not others. And that is kind of the point. None of these three methods is better than the others. The real takeaway is that if you have an income goal, Goal that you can't achieve with the capital you have now, which let's face it is the case for pretty much everyone, you need to do something. You need to pick one of these strategies or a combination or another that I haven't mentioned, but you have to do something. Otherwise you're going to fall into the same trap that Sanjay did. He invested all the money he had and it moved him some distance towards his overall goal. But because he had no savings left, he couldn't go any further and it was too late to go back and change his strategy. Each of these approaches has its pros and cons. If you want the benefit of having access to the income as it grows and you want to be able to spend your rental income rather than reinvesting it, then maybe the buy, refurb, refinance strategy is the way to go. If you've got the construction knowledge or skills or some other advantages when it comes to adding value and you've got the willingness to treat it as a job, then maybe flipping properties is your best bet. For us and our clients, the buy smart and wait approach is our chosen route because 
we don't need the rental income now. We may not even want the money now for tax purposes. Yes, the rental income does come in and we can reinvest it, but that's not our primary focus. Our aim is to grow our asset base and have the ability to convert those assets into an income stream that gives us the option to do whatever we want, say 10 or 20 years in the future. And because it doesn't rely on us actively doing much, it frees us up to build our businesses, have our careers, or do whatever we want to do. By the way, if the third option does match the type of investment strategy you want, we help busy people set up passive portfolios. So check out the link in the description. But like I say, there are pros and cons and different risks in every case. And whichever route you choose, you're looking at a journey of at least 10 years. Now, I know that might not be what you want to hear. It's not the kind of sexy claim that gets people queuing up to buy expensive courses, but it happens to be true. Property investment isn't a get rich quick scheme. It's a long-term game. But here's the great thing. If you have the discipline to make the investment and make the commitment for those 10 years and you use the right strategy, it will put you in a phenomenal position for the rest of your life. Think about it. In 10 years time, you could be sitting on a portfolio of properties that's generating enough passive income to give you real financial freedom. And that's the power of property investment when you approach it with the right strategy and a long-term mindset. But regardless of the mindset you have and the strategy you use, the best way to speed up your progress and and hack the market is to invest in the right place at the right time. So watch this video next where I reveal the two pieces of data we use to buy undervalued properties at exactly the right time.